Hello everyone, welcome back to Joyful Learning 365 YouTube channel. So today we are going to discuss about the one of the important and awaiting topic like a, so much uh, so many folks are like a, keep on commenting me and trying to uh, message me that uh, how to recover the um, plugin code and how to decompile the plugin code so for that all questions today i bring the answer so basically our topic is on so if you want to recover the code whatever the missing code is there if it is like in the source code which is not available and again some code is some issues are you are facing even you are registering for a plugin so at the time uh, which is related to the code so if you don't have a source control and the codes are missing and again if you did some changes into the code at the time if you are like a how to decompile so basically decompiling the plugin we are going to discuss in this uh, uh, series okay so let's go on if you see there are multiple scenarios uh, we will come into this picture for these all multiple scenarios so this video will be going to a like a one of the most important like for all this scenario this video will be you can follow these steps and again before starting this one i am i want to say that so seeing the other scores for example if you are working for your organization and again for that organization if your code is missing if you want to decompile it's okay it's legal because you have a full authorities to do it but when it's coming to the uh, other code. So if you are doing decompiling the other code, it is a completely illegal. So here in this video, I am not promoting anyone as a to do any illegal activity. So this is purely whenever your code is missing in some scenarios, right? So in, in at that part of scenarios, this try to follow these steps. Okay. Thank you. So now let's try to see the scenarios. So for example, in some scenarios like uh, so there is a source code. Code, some uh, source code is not updated so the reason behind for example uh, they did a directly changes into the production environment and uh, they didn't uh, they did in a test environment and so for example they got some issue in a production environment and if you see the code is looking similar they are not able to uh, they are not able to get that error entry in the test environment but when you are seeing the uh, azure repositories or git repositories the source control everywhere the code is looking quite same but uh, there is uh, something happened that's that's the reason there is issue is coming like especially business process error so you need to identify you now that why it is coming okay it's a critical situation because you don't have a source control and whatever the code has been written that code also is not aligned with you so at that point of time you will come into the nullified zone so how to come across with this nullified zone we'll try to discuss okay this might be the one scenario and again some scenarios like for example you deployed the code so managed and unmanaged solutions like when you are importing right so there is a versioning control has been not maintained at that point of point of also you will get some errors okay some breaking plugging breaking error code not found like this type of errors are there so in that situation also we can decompile the plugins how we can decompile we'll we'll, in, we'll see in this video so as you can see these are the main major five scenarios on the screen whatever you are seeing right so in this any scenario source code missing or if you are preventing like in, for example you fixed one issue but uh, uh, it is working good in a uh, uat environment but when you are going deploying the same code to the uh, production environment it is not fixed the issue was not getting fixed the the same code is working in uat environment but in production it is not working so for that also this is the solution okay so here um, these are the things which we try to discuss okay so this is about the uh, now let's come into how to decompile the deeper dive into this one so to decompile the uh, plugin code means uh, uh, reverse engineering we also can we can also call it as a reverse engineering so there are two prerequisites required to do reverse engineering first is so everyone's favorite tool as everyone knows that xrm toolbox there is no doubt at all so without xrm toolbox our dynamics life is very alone life okay so now i can say first one is it's mandatory to download the xrm toolbox and second one is we need a decompile tools okay so 
Now let's try to understand. Uh, see, as everyone knows that in XRM toolbox, we have a multiple plugins. Again, in depth, even you are coming to the XRM toolbox, which plugin you need to download, it means install into the XRM toolbox. So you need to install here assembly recovery tool. Okay, so here in the assembly recovery tool, you will get the DLL file and which you can upload it in the DLL. Okay, so here again, see, there is a two requirements. One is XRM toolbox. In that XRM toolbox, I, we need to install assembly recovery tool. Okay, first thing done. Now, second one is here, I can see, I, you can see here, decompile tool. So in decompile tool, we have a multiple, means as I can say in market, currently we have a 200 or 500 plus decompile tools out there. But in this uh, decompile tool, most of the like a, uh, like a four or five only free of them and remaining all like a, they are providing five days or 15 days uh, trial instance and after that they are trying to uh, direct a link to you to buy this. But here, as you can see on the screen, the famous three uh, decompile tool is uh, the first place I can give it as a dot pick. Uh, which, is, which is a brand of jet brains and again the second place i can give it as a lfc and the third one i can give it as a dot net reflector so here we have a multiple tools but here uh, which is like a, i'm quite familiar and which is also like a free of cost so dot peak and ellipse is a free of cost we don't need to pay a, a single rupee there is a free of uh, you can use this one but whereas coming to the dot net reflector if you are using that uh, dot net reflector right so th then you mean you you will get a 15 days of subscription a 15 days of every trial and after that you need to relieve okay so this is the so here you can install anyone okay it's not required it's not mandatory that you should install dot pick only it's install lsp whatever you want you can install because there is no such because the end of the result is we need to get the result okay this is the requirement so here i hope everyone understood so here first thing we need to have a in xrm toolbox we should have a assembly recovery tool and second thing uh, uh, we should have a we should have a dot net reflector uh, dot net reflector or a dot pick or lfc any tool so i suggest you, you can go with the dot pick or a second you can go with the lsp okay again remaining there are as i told you there are many tools if you it's it's up to you okay because I suggest these are the tools are very useful especially me so it might be how useful to you let's check that one so first I will try you one scenario. See, there are uh, in account entity, I have a account entity in that end, account entity. I have like a, uh, some plugins are registered. I need to, uh, for example, I lost that plugin code. So I need to check the code, what exactly is, because I don't have any source control here. So some developer developed and it is uh, kept it in his own local machine only. So at that point of time, what I'll do here. So so then I'll follow this one. So for that, for that first, uh, I, I should have a XRM toolbox. Okay. So let me go to the XRM toolbox in the C. So here you need to uh, make sure that you should have an updated connection. So here, as you can see, it's my trial instance, developer trial instance. So here uh, I have opened this uh, connected with my dev trial instance. And here, if you see, there is a multiple tools are there. So you can see here, if you multiple tools, assembly recovery tool. So by default, as of now, it's installed in my instance. So that's the reason by default, it is showing. So you can see here, uh, these many these many DLLs are registered in my this dev environment. Okay, out of this many, so I have like a my one is like a B39 and B40. Okay, JFL customization and this one is right B39. Okay, so let me take a sample project B39 and B40. Okay, I'm taking this one and trying to export this one. So you can see here there is an export button here. There. So click on the export button. So here, anywhere, uh, wherever you want, right, you can create there. So here in download, I'm creating uh, one folder called as a uh, recovered, recovered assemblies. Okay. So recovered assemblies, recovered assemblies. So go inside of this, select this one, and after that, click on the OK button. So here you can see assemblies recovered means successfully saved. So let me go to this browser, wherever I have created. 
so this injection have created this one right so this is the file which has been created so it is the type of this extension is this application extension okay if you open this one also you are not able to see so basically this is the dll file of my plugin okay which one we upload it into the system now if you want to see the code directly it is not possible if you open also it will open in a different way and it will be much so for that what we are doing we are taking the help of these are decompiled tools so there are many tools are there so i told you let's see go to the google from there we'll see download dot peak dot peak select on the dot peak and from here see this is the first one you got right you can open in a new window click on this one after that, accept all, click on the, okay, you can click on the, anyone. Okay, let me click on this one, download. Thank you for downloading your download chat soon. So see, it's get downloaded link, as you can see. As you can see on the screen, my dot pick software is there. Whatever the software, it has been successfully downloaded. Now what I need to do here, see, I'll click on this dot net dot pick. Uh, okay. So for example, if you're if you are using the company laptop site, right? so then you need to take the permission from your IT department uh, to install this one and you need to give the specific reason to your IT team because uh, there, it won't allow you to install in your company laptop. So basically, it's my personal laptop. So that's the reason straightforwardly I'm able to install this one. But whereas coming to the in your company laptop, right? So they won't allow. You need to give a proper justification and you need to take approval from your managers. At that point of time only, they will allow you to download such type of tools. Okay, let's wait. Uh, it's opening. Let's wait a few seconds until it's get open. So you can click on here uh, next. So here dot peak 2.4 only. So remaining you don't need because it will uh, consume so much space in your uh, laptop. So I suggest only to install this one dot peak uh, whatever the newer version is there. Right? Click on after that you can click on the next. And after that click on the accept and click on the next. So you are, as you can see on the screen now, products have been uh, successfully installed, done. And after that, you can click on the exit. Go to the search box and from here, uh, dot peak, you can select. So here you can see dot peak, uh, click on the open. Okay, click on the open. Here I accept the terms of the license. Okay. And here, see, where is like a, uh, where are you from? So basically you need to select here, which area you are from. Yeah, so now do not do not require a license because it's a free license, right? Click on now. 
it's your uh, successfully dot pick has been installed in your system as you can see on the screen it's successfully installed so this like a, this is the file so now uh, if you want to see that uh, dll file right by default if you want to see it is it won't allow so what you need to do see simply you need after downloading this dot pick application click on the file and click on the open and from here if you go there is where we stored it here, like uh, here we stored it in a recovered assemblies, right? From here, recovered assembly sample project B39 and B40. So here, this is the project, so which is missing from my side. I need to check the code. So I have selected this one, and after that, uh, I clicked on the OK. So here you can see one hierarchy has been created here, left hand side. So here, if you click on this one, right? So there is like a um, see this basically this is the class, and these are the references which has been. What are the references they use it? Microsoft .xrm .sdk has used and Microsoft system that is service that model so like this uh, if we in sample project b13 and that uh, project name is a follow so basic this is the project name and this is the class in this uh, project we have only one class that class name called it as a follow-up plugin so if you click on this double click on this one right it will get out open at right hand side uh, as you can see on the screen now your whole plugin whatever the plugin code i have we have written right so i can see here so this land here i can edit something and i can check whether what are the changes i have between the previous plugin and dll file and this current dll file. so this so this is the way where we can see the differences so okay so here uh, it, it, it it's allow you to save for example if you don't uh, if you want to save this file File. and again it, if you want to upload this one again same dll right so what you have a flexibility to here uh, save the save option is also there so here dot pick was providing you to uh, uh, like a export option also see it here and after that you can select here export to project and click on this one so this is the project where if you updated something and again you can uh, download anywhere that file so this is the you can give me here okay updated a plugin something whatever the name you have right uh, so you can give in this folder you need to save for example so this is already recovered right so here uh, change i am creating one folder change it uh, dll so in the i will give this one and after that select folder and click on the export okay here, as you can see on the screen, it now successfully export. So let me go to this folder and downloads and here recovery tools, change the DLL. So here you can see this complete assembly, whatever the DLL is there, right? So those are complete solution I am able to see here. Okay, so here I can open it in my Visual Studio and I can compile and I can re-upload it in the, uh, re-upload it into the, my, uh, plugin registration tool so like this you can follow the steps okay so this is about the uh, the recovery process of the plugins i hope uh, everyone understood if still if you have any doubts you can reach out to me through comments or else like a, a through any or through medium okay so thank you very much for watching joyful learning 365 youtube channel please like share and subscribe for more interesting updates